He is the 21st head coach in the history of the greatest institution in all the land with their football program. His name is Sharon Moore of the University of Michigan. Good to see you, Coach. How are you? I'm blessed, man. Great to see you, Rich, man. Such a pleasure and honor to be on the show. Oh, that means so much, and uh, I'm honored to have you. Um, And um, I have... I have so many questions. <laughs> I, 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 what's going on in your in your head right now as you're on the recruiting trail as the head coach of the University of Michigan football program, defending national champions, I might add. Uh, I mean, like Coach said, just going to walk around with our chest held high, uh, super excited about the goals that we accomplished and set out to do, but excited for what the future holds and just going to continue to grind and make sure that we – we stay where we're at and continue to keep on that track. I, I guess I should have been more specific. A kid from Kansas who went to Oklahoma and then yeah. uh, decided to become a coach, grinding it out. What about that guy? Thinking about it. Humble. Yeah, humble. Uh, I mean, I, I can't thank the man upstairs enough. I can't thank my family for the support that they've given me throughout my journey. But also, I mean, the number one thing I always talk about and we talked about is the players. The players are put us in this position of success. I mean, it's just, it's a humbling experience and to represent the University of Michigan, um, I can't think of a better place to do it. So just super humbled and excited. When did you first want to be a coach? When did that hit you? Yeah, when I was playing, I realized like right probably after my junior year, going to my senior spring, uh, I just was watching like Coach Stoops around me and the, the effect that they had on the players there how much fun they were having. And I just thought, man, like I want to be able to affect people that way in a positive outlet, um, obviously help win games, but like the way that they affect the people and the way my high school coach, my junior college coach, what they did and how much fun I saw they enjoyed life and they got to be around this beautiful game. That's when I figured, Hey, I want to, I want to do this. I want to be a coach. Is that when you first met my, uh, my colleague, Gerald McCoy, who's been pounding the table for you? Yes. Yeah. In college, man, Gerald's a, He's a special, special dude. Obviously a phenomenal player, but an outstanding human being. And uh, that's one of my guys I love. Okay, yeah, he talks about you all the time, Sharon. He talks about you all the time. Okay, and when did you first um, connect with Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh? When did that happen? I I was at Central Michigan, and Dan Enos uh, was the head coach my first year there. And Dan uh, left, became the OC at Arkansas. I was still at Central Michigan for four years, and – I was driving back from actually seeing uh, my family and driving into Mount Pleasant. And Dan Dan Enos called me. He's the wide receiver coach at that time at Michigan. And he's only there for like a couple months. But he calls me, says, hey, there's a tight end job open. Would you be interested? I said, absolutely. And uh, I interviewed, uh, you know, I flew back the day of the national championship convention in 2000 and I believe in 2018 and interviewed there that next day. Coach made me stay the night. Uh, I had no clothes because I, because I drove up from Mount Pleasant for two hours away. I had a suit, and he's just like, "Yeah, let's get some clothes from the equipment room, stay the night." Um, it was phenomenal. It was awesome. I remember my interview like it was yesterday. I took off my coat. I started run blocking on a chair. He pulled a GA. He made me do it on the GA. He wanted to get a piece of it. Uh, it was phenomenal, and it was a true, true Coach Harbaugh interview. And I loved every minute of it. And uh, you know thankful for everything he's done for me uh, at this point and continue to bless him. Okay. So two questions off of that. What do you mean run blocking on a chair? What, what do you, what do you, <laughs> yeah, what? So, you know, we what? interviewed, we had an interview and I was interviewing for the tight end job. And, yeah. you know, I talked about my philosophy, how I coach the position. Uh, but the first thing I learned from one of my mentors, Dave Borbally was uh, when you do an interview, like you need to show what you're going to do and teach it. So when I taught it, I literally took off my coat jacket and I started rum blocking on how I would teach rum block. And then coach never did on GA. He wanted to be a part of it. Uh, <laughs> it was awesome. I, that, and just knowing Jim, like you must have had him in hello by grabbing a chair and let's start rum blocking <laughs> right here. I'm taking off my coat, you know, attacking yeah, with an enthusiasm, I mean, was, you know? Yeah, it was awesome. I just wanted to show how I would teach it and talk about how I teach it, but show it. And it was a, pretty cool experience and uh very you know unforgettable and so when you when you said stay the night i mean was that the, and 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 they gave you gear from the equipment room was that the first time you put on michigan clothes it was it was very uh very special surreal um i, I remember you know just getting that getting the stuff and putting it on because i had nothing else i had a suit and that's all i had so you know coach said hey you, know, you should put some 
Wow. I mean, being able to sit in a hotel room and see that, you know, Michigan gear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was my last question. Hotel room. I don't know if he put you in the Harbaugh guest room or anything like that. So, <laughs> no, okay. No, no, okay no. Cool. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and what if somebody had called, told you, cause obviously when, when you're, when you're trying to, um, you know, climb a ladder as a coach and you're an assistant, it, it is all in, in, in one day hoping to get a program of your own. What if somebody told you that day, hey, this is not just to get a program of your own. This is to give you a path to become the Michigan head coach, to to succeed Jim Harbaugh. What would you have said to that yeah, individual then? Them. Yeah, I wouldn't have believed them. Uh, I would have said that you're crazy. You're out of your mind. But they're very, very humbled and blessed that, that I am in this position and uh, excited. Okay, so Sharon Moore, head coach of Michigan football here on the Rich Eisen Show. Here are some other questions I have for you. Um, What was it like? Describe for me, from your perspective, that flight to Penn State. You're on this plane. You have no idea if Jim Harbaugh is going to be the coach there or not. You have no idea if you're going to be the coach of this game or not. What was that flight like that day? Uh, I mean, the flight there, I mean, we kind of, you know, we heard rumblings. We didn't really know. And I'm sitting right by a coach and we're like on the plane. We got Wi-Fi and like twiddling through our phones, not really watching movies. And then like we land. And when we land, that's when we all see it. Like coach is not, you know, he's going to be suspended, whatever. And, you know, we're sitting on the bus, driving on the bus, talking about, you know, different options. He's like, well, should I fight it? Is it and, and this is the, the best part about coach. He's like, well, you know what? If I don't fight it, it'll be, you know, it will, you know, they'll stop talking about me and it'll be all about the players. He's like, because I don't want to fight it and then them continue to talk about me. He said, it's about the players. He's like, I think we're going to win anyway. So I I don't want to make this about me. I should just, you know, I should just sit out and, and, you know, you handle it and let it be about the players. And I was like, coach, we, we need you there. Uh, we want you there. Um, so initially he, he, you know, he put a fight, you know, he fought for, but, you know, whatever happened didn't happen. And the players just, you know, that's when the bet started. We were at dinner and the guys were, they, Chris Jenkins, I think, tweeted it out. And then JJ did, and then the rest of them did. And it was just like a, okay, you're going to take our coach from us. You think that's going to stop us? And it was a, a very big boulder that was on their shoulder that they thought um, they wanted to prove themselves right, not necessarily prove doubt or wrong. And, you know, the results are the results. So how did you handle it? putting the headset on. Yeah, you know, yeah, for me, it was a, uh, I, I was extremely confident in our team and the way that they practiced, the way they prepared at that moment. Yeah, obviously it was a surreal moment for me because, there were, you know, we were going back and forth uh, whether Coach would be able to coach. And we were waiting at the, he was waiting at the hotel and then our AD Ward manual came on about 90 minutes before the game kicked off and said, hey, uh, we got you. You know, you're going to coach the game. And, I, I, you just heavily relied on the staff. Everybody we have, we had an amazing, we have an amazing staff. So that was uh, very humbling. There was not any nerves, not any anxiety. I was just super excited to watch the boys play. Well, and I mean, and then the, the photograph we have up is obviously your emotional response upon winning the game. Um, uh, uh, what, what, what do you think brought all this on? When now that you look back on it this reaction yeah i think a number of things i think um you know when you go through crazy you know times like that and uncertainty you know there's a lot of emotions a lot of human emotions and sometimes you know i wear my i wear my heart on my sleeve and i'm not afraid of that so uh i I, it was a super emotional time excited time but you know to watch our players go through all this craziness and people try to doubt that you know how good they were and it was just it was just cool to watch our players play at that high level and play angry, play fast, play physical, play for each other. And when you're part of a family and something happens good or bad to your family, there's emotions involved. In it. And uh, we have a true family. So I think that's where that all came from and uh, wanted to do it for Coach Harbaugh and, and you know, and, and prove his legacy of who he is as one of the greatest coaches to coach at Michigan. And then two weeks later, oh, my goodness gracious. I mean, this. The, um, I mean, uh, it's tough for me to try and maintain my professionalism, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> it, it was. It was truly one of the most remarkable days to see you on the sideline for Michigan as the head coach against Ohio State, and then beat the 
the the you know the Buckeyes for a third straight time, and um, uh, and knowing that now you're you're undefeated still going to the Big Ten, the entire uh, construct of of doing it for coach and doing it for the team and doing it to prove everything that had been accused of the team that had been ripped out root and branch was not the cause of the success of you and the, 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 the awards that your offensive line was, was accruing under your tutelage and leadership and everything. Uh, And I'm wondering what that meant for you to have beaten Ohio state as a head coach of the university of Michigan, albeit uh, in, as you would say, interim only for the moment. Uh, I meant everything. I mean, just winning that game, uh, regardless of whether you're the head coach or the, you know, office coordinator, or line coach, defense coordinator, it means, it means everything. That's everything we work for all year. That's the standard we uphold ourselves in that program and we'll continue to do so. Uh, we know everything we do and we work for, we're trying to beat them every single day. Uh, so it, it meant everything. And that's, that's the game we work for. And, I uh, was super excited for that moment for our players, for our fans, for the university to continue what we've been doing. And, and we look to continue to uphold that standard. Absolutely. Sharon Moore, the head coach of Michigan football, a few minutes left with him as he's on the recruiting trail um, in his first week full time on the job. So the um, the national championship is won, and I know I'm just fast forwarding here <laughs> mm-hmm. through that. I just yada, 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 one of the greatest three weeks of my entire life, and I'm sure yours. But um, but now I'm wondering if Jim's coming here to Los Angeles or not. How did how did you handle the that interim period where you were the uh, offensive coordinator and assistant, and now wondering what was happening? Yeah, you know, there was always the rumblings. There was always the things. But Coach is very transparent with us and told us what he's going to do and you know what he's going to look at and. You know his options, and if it was if it was there, then it was there, and he would he would look at his options, and if he thought it was best for him and his family, he would take it. So it wasn't a lot of worrying. It was just kind of you know worried about that day. What could we do that day to make sure that the players there were excited to come back and and keep rolling, and they are, and now they're out there working. But for us, it wasn't as much worry as you know happiness for coach, but happy that we just won the national championship. You know, I think. Some people go their whole lives not, you know, coaching and never get to that point. So I think it was a blessing for us to to get there. And obviously we want to get there every year. Uh, but so we definitely celebrated that moment of, of being national champions. And so when now that you're on the, the recruiting trail, what are what are, I guess, the the questions you're being asked by parents, by recruits about who you are and what you're going to do with this program now? What are you hearing the most? Yeah, you know, they just asked me, will the program be ran the same? What the staff will look like? And I think all those questions will get answered. You know, as far as the program being running the same, you know, if, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, there's a lot of things that we do we do phenomenal here, and I want to continue that path. And uh, there will be things that I do a little bit different that are my way, but there's not going to be a wholesale change of the culture and the brotherhood that we have because it's really good. And I've been here for six years and understand what it's taken to get there. And I'm not going to mess that up and, you know, bring in the right people to coach our student athletes, be a part of our student athletes live and really be their families is, is the number one goal right now. Do you have one thing? Cause I'm sure many of my <laughs> like-minded individuals are, uh, are, are, want me to ask this. What, what are you going to do different? What, what can you be specific about right here that you think is going to be yeah, different? I mean, real, the, the biggest thing is to be me, you know, coach is a, a special human being. He's an awesome, phenomenal coach person, but you know, just in the realm of everyday living, I'm going to be who I am. Um, I, I'm I'm full of enthusiasm, just like Coach, but uh, I'm I'm just a little different than him, you know. And uh, I'm I'm going to put my touch on the program. Uh, we're going to have fun, just like we did before. Uh, but we're going to be super aggressive, super aggressive in recruiting, super aggressive in everything we do, uh, and, and the toughness, the physicality, the smash mentality that we have in the offensive line room. We'll just continue to carry out uh, through, you know, the University of Michigan football program. So you're saying you're not feeding chickens in your backyard? Is that basically <laughs> no, you're saying? No, I don't have any chickens. I got okay. a dog. Okay. I got two daughters, but okay. no chickens back there. Okay. So that'll be different. Okay, very good. Um, and so um, the the NIL world and the, the lack of rules, uh, quite frankly, that are uniform for everybody to follow – uh, we saw the head coach of Boston College take a defensive coordinator position with 
the Green Bay Packers. We're, we're hearing how maybe part of the reason why Jim wanted to leave is he's going to a spot for prof- a professional football where, where there are rules for free agency and you don't have to keep recruiting those who are already in your program to make sure that they're happy. Uh, how, how are you, in your ways, in your belief, equipped to handle this part of the business right now? Yeah, I mean, we really support NIL and, and what it, you know, what it means for our players, you know, the, the earning of their name and image and likeness and, and earning what they deserve. Um, so definitely going to fight for the players as much as we can and, and what we can do. Um, so as, as much as I can, you know, get the money and raise the money for our players. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And it's just it's just part of college football. It's evolving. So you have to evolve with it and continue to stay ahead of the chains. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do. OK. And then on the on the trail at all, or is anybody being asked about the NC? Anybody asking you about the NCAA and the investigation and everything else? Are you and how do you how do you respond when asked about that? Yeah, I mean, that's something that's out there. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with it. And we're just going to take it day by day. You know, obviously, I think the uh, president made a, a great statement talking about how, uh, you know, our players and, and we want it fair and square. You know, like just like coach said, think we're innocent. And we'll just keep trucking along and attacking every day. And and that's what we're going to do. OK, you got a you got a phrase, you got a quote, anything like that about uh, yeah, I heard you just say attack each day. I heard that one. Yeah, we'll um, definitely attack each day with enthusiasm, known to mankind. Understood, yeah. understood. But Absolutely. do you have anything, anyone of, of your own? You got one that you're, you're, you're hatching? I know you're using the word smash a lot. I'm hearing that. I do use the word smash a lot, but no real quotes, uh, no no catchphrases, nothing like that as of right now that, that have uh, bobbed in my head. But, okay. you know, the, the big thing that we're going to do in our program I've talked about is we will do three things. You know, we've talked about the process, the pursuit, and the standard. And we've hit the process. We all talked about process over prize, and we got the prize. Now, you, you, you know, you continue on the pursuit, and that's the pursuit of greatness. And once you do that, you know, you win a couple of championships, you graduate your players, um, you get them to the next level, you see them be great husbands and fathers, you become the standard, and that's what we want to be. Well, I mean, you, it, it kind of feels like you've already – jammed uh, a lifetime of head coaching experience <laughs> into, into like one month. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you know what it's like to coach a game if you don't know if you're going to be the head coach. You know what it's like to coach the biggest rivalry game, I'd like to say, in all of college football, if not yeah. maybe all of sports, and that that's an argument. You know what it's like to be there on the sideline of uh, – college football, you know, national championship, semifinals, the Rose Bowl, my goodness. And then, yep. um, you know, game plan for for a national championship within a span of six days and then become a head coach your own, uh, of your own. Uh, it's It feels like you've, you've been through a lifetime already, you know? Yeah, it's been it's been a uh, – people ask, like, how's the – you know, congratulations, how's it been? And it's it's been a super blessing. It's been phenomenal. But it's been a crazy – three months and uh but i wouldn't trade it for a world how old are your girls uh four and one. Oh my so God. my four-year-old is her name is shiloh and my one-year-old who turns two in june is soleil uh they are the bosses of the house and they know it <laughs> okay well coach listen um uh i you know whatever you whatever you need to maybe help out in any way shape or form you know you've got uh, a friend in me right here Thank you. Uh, and uh, no, thank you. Are you kidding me? Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being you. And thank you for, uh, for, for being part of the program and then taking it over. And uh, I can't wait to see what you do with it. I appreciate it, Rich. You got it. Thanks again. Um, drive safe, be well, and uh, let's, uh, let's chat soon. Yeah, we will. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, it. Go blue. Yeah, go blue to you. That's Sharon Moore, the uh, head coach of Michigan football right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.